Yeah, with 100 days to cop, we are launching our climate conversations this morning. And joining me uh, from, funnily enough, a sustainable event that he's attending in Geneva. I'm very pleased to be speaking to Ibrahim al Zubi. He's the chair for the Global Council on UN Sustainable Development Goal number 13, which is the climate change one. Ibrahim, good morning. Thanks for staying with us. Good morning again, Randy. Thank you. And I'm very keen to find out what businesses need to be doing to prepare for COP, to listen for at COP and what might come out of it that affects them. And you're the perfect person for that because some of the biggest companies in the world are on your council and your council has just launched the CSO Network, which is 40 companies focused on the road to COP. What does that actually mean in practice? Absolutely. Thank you, Brandy. So uh, for us, uh, no matter how large or small and regardless of the industry of the companies, all companies can contribute to the SDGs. So what we've started with as um, a council, we did a study um, uh, on the MENA region where we reached out with the Arab League, we reached out to public sector staff uh, to ask them about climate change awareness and how they can make a difference and how legislation can improve uh, one industry sustainable, uh, the sustainable business, sustainable development, as well as it will help us as a private sector to accelerate uh, our uh, uh, targets to achieve uh, our climate targets as well as the government. So we found out that there is a bit of a missing gap between uh, the public and the private sector. Uh, and I believe Bill Gates in his book, uh, How to Solve a Climate Crisis, he highlighted that um, to solve the problem, you need to go back to the roots and ensure that the legislations are e either climate friendly or adapted uh, to the, the new targets be it mitigation or adaptation for climate. So um, what we've done now to prepare the road to the COP, we announced a couple of initiatives uh, to prepare for COP and beyond. And one of them is um, uh, to look at biodiversity, nature-based solutions. So we'll have a platform for that before COP. We also uh, we will uh, uh, organize a, a global sustainable leaders summit d during COP for businesses where we invite companies from the global north and global south to talk about one sustainable finance and investments and solutions climate tech water tech circular economy as well as to discuss regional uh, indices uh, for climate and sustainability taking regional uh, uh, geographies and economies into consideration uh, we do have um, uh, companies, uh, be it financial institutions, development banks, or even uh, high-tech and AI companies as part of the council. So what we're looking at, Brandy, is we're focusing on the solution. And most importantly is we're using the, now the countdown 100 days to COP and beyond COP to ensure we have a plan by 2030. So we look at, yes, at the climate, at the COP28, but we're not doing it only for COP28 or beyond. We're doing it to ensure that the sustainability businesses, the climate change investments or climate action investments are embedded within the long-term business strategies of the companies we represent in the council. And while we're doing that, we're doing it hand-in-hand -hand with the public sector employees. Uh, so part of it, um, in raising awareness and education, launching educational programs to go after these public sector employees. And we talk about frontline employees. What does climate change mean for them? How can I, if I want to be in at zero by 2050, it means I have to design, if it's a real estate, uh, I have to design now for net zero, one, uh, to save money, and two, to have access to capital for these things. And most importantly, uh, to have license to operate, as simple as that. And we look at it as well, um, and you know, when we have the discussions at the council, future-proofing our companies, we are aware that um, there is an impact, socioeconomic and environmental impact, so better to get ready for it. You mentioned legislation there, and while we are talking about positioning yourself, getting ready for, for things, what should companies be listening for at COP that could turn into emerging regulation, particularly around the goals, the, the 1.5 goal, etc., that will affect the private sector? Absolutely. You know, for me, I've been to, to many COPs, and it's, it's a political uh, uh, discussions and negotiations. So for the listeners in COP, they have two zones, the blue zone, where the negotiators, the representative of the government, look at the, uh, how the government did already or countries did already in their climate plans, and as well as maybe raise the bar or discuss 
further. And there's the green zone, where uh, you see a lot of private sector looking at discussions for solutions, uh, for the uh, technological innovation uh, to help you to accelerate. Personally, I, I believe private sector, while they're listening at what's happening in the blue zone, I think uh, in Dubai this year, uh, the green zone will be a platform for a lot of uh, uh, solutions and innovations uh, to accelerate one, their investments, and if they are interested to invest in, in climate tech, I think the next big rhinos and uh, 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 unicorns will be climate tech or water tech. So for, for people interested or private sector invest, interested to look at solutions and investments, I am sure they will find a lot of solutions and startups as well as solutions in the green zone. The other one is um, uh, the discussions that we have in the green zone between public and private. But guess what, Brandy? I believe all Dubai will be uh, full of lots of discussions, uh, even within COP, within the expo, and outside the expo. So um, I, I recommend uh, for the private sector uh, uh, leaders to ensure that they have the first two weeks of December free, uh, to ensure that they have a dedicated time for it. But one, they have to, they can go be pragmatic and look at uh, solutions to ensure that they are embedded in their uh, uh, climate targets, as well as start discussions with the uh, the whole governments of the world, the United Nations, the intergovernmental organizations we're going to have in one place for two weeks to ensure that uh, they're ready for the coming legislations, be it uh, raising the bar or uh, looking for solutions. Uh, just two minutes left with you, Ibrahim. You talk about doing well by doing good. Do we yeah. still need to break down the perception that doing the sustainable thing, the environmental thing, is a cost centre rather than a profit centre? Absolutely not. Uh, 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 again, with the acceleration of technology, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the investments in climate and sustainability in general, be it socioeconomic or environmental, proved uh, that it can c save you uh, costs. Uh, it's uh, long-term profitability. And now the, the, the you want to have access to capital. Uh, the Most of the banks or most of the financial inst institutions, if not all, uh, they look at the uh, sustainability and environmental imperative of companies that they want to invest in. Um, and, and now with also with, with the, uh, the social media and access to information, um, uh, companies have absolutely no choice to future-proof their companies and ensure that while they're doing their business, they're maximizing their socioeconomic and, uh, impact and minimizing their environmental impact. And guess what, Brandy? The technological innovation, climate tech, again, and water tech, proved that uh, it's one of the best investments uh, uh, companies can do, uh, be it uh, now with the energy prices, uh, with access to water in some, comp in some countries, uh, as well as legislations uh, tightening on circular economy and waste, there is absolutely no solution for companies to invest in sustainable development and sustainable business solutions. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, waking up extremely early to do so. I've been speaking to Ibrahim al -Zubi. He's the chair of the Global Council on UN Sustainable Development Goal Number 13. That's the climate change one. He's the author of several books on business and sustainability at the moment. He's at a World Economic Forum sustainability meeting, waking up to speak to us from Geneva for our first climate conversation.